Shana Tova. Okay, that was actually not bad, my friends. We're gonna try it again. The 5.30 service really struggled on this. So you're stronger, you've been nourished by your dinners, hopefully, and we have a lot of space to fill, as you can tell. So for those of us who are here in this space, in the large sanctuary, we're gonna try to fill up our expansiveness in this room with the expansiveness of our spirit and our hearts with the words of Shana Tova, and hopefully that will reach out and through the internet to all of our friends and family who are not here with us in this space, but who are streaming the service all around the world. So let's try it again on the count of three, okay? One, two, three. Shana Tova. Yeah, you win. Don't tell the other ones, but you win, definitely. We wish you Shana Tova. And just to name a few wonderful things, you will never get better seats at the High Holy Days than right now. There has never been a better parking lot experience entering and exiting than this night. So we begin in that invitation to that sort of framework. It is the new year. And it is this second Rosh Hashanah that we enter and continue in a world that is very much still in flux. And we can take to heart that we can come together, whether we're here in our building or whether we're in our own Mikdash Shema'at in our homes, the small sanctuaries we've learned to make in our own dwelling places. But wherever we are, we are at once connected to each other. This is the promise of the High Holy Days. And at the same time, we are also connected to the countless generations who have come before us in times of blessing and in times of challenge to claim our place this day in the story of our people and our faith as we declare the onset of a new year. Thank God. For those here in person, though, we do know it feels different. The sanctuary is like it really never has been for the High Holy Days. And we cannot see the fullness of each other's faces by intention, both steps we undertake to ensure the health and well-being of our community. There is no higher Jewish value nor human value than that. So too, we have the gift this year of hearing the shofar live and in person in our space, but it will sound potentially a little bit different as the safety precautions we have to undertake involve placing covers over the shofar. So if it sounds a little bit unlike it has in years before, it's just another opportunity to savor the uniqueness of this moment. If you're joining us from afar, we know that still not being together physically feels different. It should. But wherever you find yourself, here, there, we invite you not to focus so much on what's different, but rather to step into the experience, however it meets you, more deeply, to set your mind and heart in the direction of possibility that each and every new year brings us, the opportunity to see ourselves, our relationships, our world through new eyes, to do better, to be better. And there has never been a better time in our collective lifetimes to awaken to that possibility. If you're joining us on the internet, you can find a copy of the Machsor at our website, www.nsci.org slash hhd2021. And you can follow the links on the Facebook page to the Digital Machsor as well. So let's pray together. Let's reflect. Let's allow ourselves to be immersed in the potential of these highest of holy days. Because that part is exactly as it always has been, and God willing, as it always will be. With each and every year, the opportunity to celebrate the fact that we have made it here to this moment together, and that an entirely new future is set to open right before our eyes as soon as we claim it. Let's join together in the blessing over the candles.
Join with me. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Asher Kedishana Bemitzvota Vitzivanu Lahadlik Ner Shel Yom Tov. We invite you to please rise. We turn to page 17 in our Mach Zarim. As we arrive at Hinani, our declaration of presence at the arrival of this new year. Die Lord is but the Lord will come in the Fanecha. I'll come Israel, a share of Alpi Shenich Dai Ragul Chach Alkein Nabakeshcha Elohi Abraham Elohi Yitzchak I Shadow, I need O God, our God and God of our ancestors, may we know your blessings in this year, 5,782. Eternal One, bless us and the whole house of Israel with renewed life, happiness, and peace comfort and courage, resilience and strength. May the words of our heart be acceptable to you in the new year that stretches before us. We are forever grateful for the gift of life.
Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Raise your hand if you've heard that at least a million times on a road trip. Raise your other hand if you wind it at some point in your life. Usually that question is about physical travel, often with lots of miles before you and cranky children in the back seat, but not always. But one could argue it's the same question we've been asking now for months as we've looked at the world and local scene, wondering what's going on. Are we there yet? Are we back to normal? Are we back to the classroom and office? Are we done worrying? Are we able to walk freely without masks? Are we able to go out easily with friends and not be worrying? Or celebrate simchas, joyous occasions, without concern? We know the answer. Look around. Many, many fewer of us are here in the sanctuary than two years ago in 2019 when we last gathered in person for Rosh Hashanah. How many more of us are sitting home again, taking in high holiday services from the couch, the kitchen table, or the backyard? Concerns are up, moods are down, mask mandates are back, and we're all navigating new territory and comfort zone. The answer to are we there yet, well, you know it. It's a resounding no. It's no if we mean back to the way things were, back to what we might call normal. But wait, we are here. We may not be where we thought we'd be or where we want to be, but we're here in the sanctuary or at home or wherever we are, we are here gathered on Rosh Hashanah. We are alive. Some of us have survived COVID, thank God. Many of us are vaccinated one, two, or even three times better protected than a year ago. Unsteady in our footing as the ground beneath us continues to shift, certainly we're in a different place from last year. The world's not as open or as comforting as we'd like. But listen to what we just heard. Cantor Goldstein chanted Hineni, the prayer that literally opens Rosh Hashanah and says, I am here. Extends that to all of us. We are here. Now, of course, here is not there. There is where we hoped to be. Earlier in the summer, remember that? June, July, there was a bright glimpse of there like redemption on the horizon, a more normal place. It felt great. Openness to go places, be with people, not worry so much. It was, there was levity, even euphoria. And then things changed. So what do we do on Rosh, this Rosh Hashanah? Do we just give up on the here and squish back into our couch cushions and say, ah, oh, we're not there, I'm done? Hardly. I've thought about this a lot. I've thought about it exploring a piece of our tradition, a powerful piece that may be familiar to some of you, because I so assumed we would be there by Rosh Hashanah. I spent many hours this summer studying a text of what's called Birkat HaGomel, a blessing of redemption, a blessing found in the Talmud that is a prayer for surviving life-threatening danger. You see, the Talmud classifies four categories of people who can say this blessing. If you're a seafarer, you've crossed the sea in a boat. If you've walked through the desert, if you were ill and recovered, or you were in prison and released. A person who has emerged from one of these dangerous situations gets up before the congregation, says a prescribed, like a set line of prayer, expressing gratitude to God, and then the congregation responds with a different set line, prayer, expressing gratitude. So back in the early days of summer, it seemed that by Rosh Hashanah, we would have passed through this life-threatening illness to the shore of safety. The blessing, I was certain, would make sense. But circumstances have certainly changed. Perhaps a recent Atlantic headline says it all. The COVID virus is here forever. So I realized that that was not the blessing for this Rosh Hashanah. But I do invite those of you 
who want to at some point bench gomel, as it's called in Yiddish, those of you who want to mark emerging from COVID-19 with life and health, to speak to me, to Rabbi Geffen, Rabbi Daniels, or Cantor Goldstein, and we will gladly mark that prayer of gratitude with you. But for now, it's not the right prayer for our entire community. My goal is to bring our voices together as one, most deliberately. Why? First, consider what here means in the larger world. Surgeon General Vivek Murthy, in his recent book, Together, The Healing Power of Connection in a Sometimes Lonely World, Dr. Murthy reflects on the period we've been living through. He remarks on the human losses of connection. Murthy writes, the bottom line is that we all yearn to connect. There are two basic human yearnings, to feel at home in your own skin and to feel at home on this wonderful earth. Your sense of self, he explains, is a communal construct. Whether you put it theologically or biologically, we are created for community. Without community, we struggle. It's as if we don't have air to breathe. Remember that feeling? Especially really early on in the pandemic? That utter lack of connection, as if we didn't have oxygen to breathe? I do. What do we do? Dr. Murthy explains, creating a connected life begins with the decisions we make in our day-to-day -day lives. Do we choose time? Do we choose to make time for other people? Do we show up as our true selves? Do we seek others with kindness? He explains that making a connected life is not always easy. It requires courage, the courage to be vulnerable, to take a chance on others, to believe in ourselves, and to treat kindness and compassion as sacred values. So think about it. Ask yourself Dr. Murthy's question. Ask yourself, when have I chosen to make time for other people? When did I show up as my true self? When did I seek out others with kindness? When did I act with courage and vulnerability? Dovetailing his observations are those of Professor Adam Grant, organizational psychologist and acclaimed Wharton professor. Professor Grant writes about the lack of joy we've experienced of late. We've experienced of late. Joy, he explains, is brought about by something called collective effervescence. This is, he explains, is a concept used to describe the sense of energy and harmony we feel when we come together in a group around a shared purpose. It's the synchrony, he describes, the synchrony you feel when you slide into rhythm with others on a dance floor, colleagues in a brainstorming session, community, friends and family at a religious service, or teammates on a soccer field. And during this pandemic, it's been largely absent for our, from our lives. So look back on your summer and the year ending. Recall an experience of shared energy. Maybe you were sitting over coffee or lunch outside with a friend, taking a walk in the botanic garden, playing a sport, serving at a soup kitchen, making music. Maybe you were joining a protest for a cause you believe in, or celebrating B'nai Mitzvah or a wedding. Or you were sitting outside on the terrace with us singing Shema or Lakado Di. Think about how those moments felt especially when they were really new or renewed, when you hadn't done them in a long time. Indeed, we've had a loss of connectedness and a loss of joy. So what do we do? Dr. Murthy tells us to show up, be honest and vulnerable as our true selves, bring kindness and compassion to others. Professor Grant tells us to connect, care, and contribute, to pursue happiness collectively together. I invite you to start with me. Where? With a blessing that literally says, thanks for bringing us here. We invoke it for a new house or new clothes, seeing a friend after more than a month, eating a fruit for the first time in the season, or perhaps it's best known from the first night of Hanukkah, and a few other holidays. 
That blessing is Shehachianu. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech alam shehachianu v'kiyamanu v'higiyanu l'azman hazeh. We can say it and sing it in our sleep, many of us, but now let's unpack it. The blessing has three verbs. The first is the word shehechianu, from the verb, the Hebrew word for giving life. We are alive. We are renewed each day with a clean soul, a clear soul, a clean slate, a pure soul, I should say. And our evening prayer, Hashkivenu, says that we request that we awaken to life each morning. We don't take life for granted. Now go further. Take it to connecting, caring, and contributing. What makes you feel alive? With capital letters. What acts of caring and contributing connect you to others? The second verb, verb is vikiamanu. The Hebrew root is from for preserving or sustaining, keeping us going. Yes, we're alive, and yes, we're going. But go deeper. Ask yourself, am I just kind of preserved and hanging around? Or am I seeking out pursuits with others that give me that sensation of collective effervescence, that energizing joy that makes me feel I'm connected beyond myself? And third, vihigyanu literally arriving or reaching. So ask yourself, not literally, like not did you drive the car here, but how did I get here? What intention did I bring to arrive here at this time? Lazman hazeh. Shehechianu v'kiyamanu v'higiyanu. We've got life, we've been sustained, and we are here celebrating the new year. The blessing is that simple. The gratitude is not simple. It is deep. The blessing takes into account the fragility of life. We know there are no guarantees. We've seen anything in recent months. We know that even more. But right now, wherever we are, gathered at home or in synagogue, we are here. No matter how many times you said or sung that blessing, and it goes up into the thousands, perhaps more, take another look. Shehechianu marks that we are here. It doesn't say we're not there. It doesn't look over there where we aren't. See yourself one year ago and see where you are now. Ask yourself, what am I grateful for at this moment? What am I grateful for here and now? Now I invite you to join together wherever you are in these simply powerful words in just a moment. Really, wherever you are. If you're sitting at home alone, if you're sitting in a dorm room, if you're sitting in the sanctuary, if you're sitting in the backyard, if you're on the North Shore or another hemisphere, the actual saying of this blessing of gratitude marks precisely where we are. Are we there yet? No. But it doesn't matter. We're here. We are here welcoming the new year. We are here about to listen to the sound of the shofar. We are here bringing our voices together in strength. We are here calling out our deepest gratitude. We are here seeking joy in one another's voices. We are here together, apart. We are here. Join me. Baruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, shehachianu v'kimanu, v'higianu lazman hazeh. We praise you, Adonai, our God, sovereign of the universe. You give us life, you sustain us, and you have brought us here now.
We turn to page 20 in our Machzarim, in our prayer books, and rise, if you're able, for Barthus. Continue together in the middle of page 22. Blessed are you, Adonai. Your great name fills the universe with majestic might. Your word creates twilight and dusk as your wisdom opens the gates of night. Your discernment separates the changing seasons and causes the passage of time. The stars arrayed across the sky reveal your design. You roll out the cycle of darkness and light shaping day and night. You sweep away day and carry the world into nightfall, setting day apart from nighttime. You are God of all we can perceive and all that is beyond our perception. Living eternal God, be our sovereign to the end of time. Baruch atah Adonai hama'ariv aravim. Page 24.
Be seated. Let's continue chanting Ve'ahavta, page 28, and that will continue on to page 30. Ve'ahavta et Adonai Elohecha, v'chol levavacha u'v'chol nafshecha, u'v'chol me'odecha, v'hayu the Babri, my Ela, a share no he, Metsabeha, a yom alva beha, Reshinantam lava deha, the Dibaratam, Beshiveteha, Beveteha, Uvelefteha, Badere, Uvishopeha, Uvekomeha. Ukeshartam le o talia deha, reha you let of a toot bein in deha. Ukabdam al mesus hot be deha, uvish a reha. Lem antis geru, ma asitem et for mitzvotai, the hip tem kedoshim le loefem. Adonai Elohim, Asher Rotsei Pietem, Me Eretz Mitzrayim, Riot Lachem Elohim. Adonai Elohim, Amen. We'll continue together at the bottom of page 33. Those three stanzas, let's offer those responsively. You have stayed long enough in this place, God said. Time to go forward. Turn, Turn your, your face, face to, the to the future. future. Believe, Believe that, that you can cross this sea and survive. survive. Inside you is a Moses. Within you, Miriam dances unafraid. Lift up your voice and sing a new song. Micha Mocha, our song of freedom, page 
34. found myself from time to time this past year and over the past 18 months contemplating the themes of this next prayer. It served as a source of strength for me in troubling times, moments of uncertainty and concern. Hashkivenu Adonai Eloheinu watch over us, O God. As one of my teachers reflects, there's something profoundly comforting about the basic human terms in which this prayer speaks. Some prayers, especially during these high holy days, focus on the lofty themes that sometimes feel a bit removed from our daily lives. But Hashkivenu gives voice to our deepest fears. We ask for God to watch over us, to guard us, spread over us a sukkot shalom, a shelter of peace, enabling us to rest peacefully and wake up again restored to life doesn't get much more primal than that. Hashkivenu Adonai Eloheinu, watch over us, we who go forth into this new year. Watch over us all this day and every day of this new year. Hashkivenu is on page 36. Oh! <laughs> 
sera slatan mir fanne lu mir fanne lu onde akare lu ubitzel grafa das tire Via con la moglie Israel, e allo sala. We enter this section of Amida together beginning with Avot Imahot on page 44 and continuing to the next page. If you're feeling able, please rise. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu, Velohe avoteinu v'yimoteinu, Elohe Abraham, Elohe Yitzhak, Elohe Yaakov, Elohe Sarah, Elohe Ripka, Elohe Rachel, Elohe Vea, Ha'el Hagadol, Hagipor, Vanora, El Elyon, Gomel Hasadim Tobim, Vekone Hakol, Vezoher Hasteabot, Vimahot, Nevi Gulalib Nevnehem, Lema Anchemo, Beava. Mohrid Hattal, 
מכלכל חי בחסד, מחיי הכל ברחמים רבים, סומק נופלים רופא קולים, ומתיר אסורים, ומקיים אמונתו לשני עפר, מי כמוך בעל גבורות, ומי דומה לך, מלך מימית ומחיה, ומצמיח ישועה. מי כמוך אל הרחמים, זוכר יצריו לחיים רחמים. ונאמן אתה להחיות הכל, ברוך אתה אדוני, מחיי הכל. Let's continue together praying in English on page 54. In your love, eternal our God, you have given us this day of remembrance, a day for the shofar's joyful sound, a day of sacred assembly, a day to be mindful of our peoples going out from Egypt. Our God and God of all generations before us, may a memory of us ascend and come before you May it be heard and seen by you, winning your favor and reaching your awareness. Together with the memory of our ancestors, may the memory of your sacred city, Jerusalem, and the memory of your people, the family of Israel, may we be remembered for safety, well-being, and favor, for love and compassion, for life and for peace, on this day of remembrance. Page 60. Adonai Eloheinu
Rabbi Milton Steinberg wrote the words in the middle of page 65 after leaving the hospital for a long stay. His words reflect our normal propensity to feel intense gratitude for our lives after we come close to losing life. He writes, after a long illness, I was permitted for the first time to step outdoors. And as I crossed the threshold, sunlight greeted me. So long as I live, I shall never forget that moment. And everywhere, in the firmament above me, in the great vault between the earth and sky, on the pavements, the buildings, the golden glow of sunlight, it touched me too with friendship, with warmth and blessing. And I remembered how often I had been indifferent to the sunlight how often preoccupied with petty and sometimes mean concerns, I had disregarded it. And I said to myself, how precious is the sunlight, but alas, how careless of it we are. Our prayer for peace, Shalom Rav, is on page 66. Shalom Rab al Israel Amcha Dasim pray to be inscribed in this book of life. We pray for goodness and blessing and prosperity. And we know that there are people in our lives, our friends and our family, who are not feeling so whole right now. We're in need of a special prayer for healing, healing of body and of mind and of spirit. So if you're thinking of someone this evening, who can use a special spiritual pick-me-up, a prayer for healing, I'd invite you to whisper their names aloud. If you're joining us online, you can write their names in our chat on Facebook and speak them in the sanctuary of your home.
Baruch Ata Adonai Rofeha Cholim, blessed is our eternal God. We pray for a measure of healing for all who are in need. Amen. Refine Adonai few moments for our own personal prayer and silent meditation.
page 74. Avinu Malkenu, strong was the faith of generations before us. In exile, they proclaimed enduring hope. In the shadow of persecution, they affirmed a transcendent love and compassion. Ours is a different age, less confident and certain, more tentative in its trust. There are many who say to the works of their hands, you are our gods. But when our worship centers on our own creations, we feel less gratitude, more doubt and despair. This is the paradox of our spiritual lives. We grow smaller in self-exaltation, nobler when we reach for you. Let's read together. On this night of return, let us find the humility to come close to you and open ourselves to your presence. For you are absent only when we fail to make room for you in our hearts, distant only when we turn away from you. Now, as others have done before us, let us overcome doubt and speak these words of affirmation. We call you Avinu. As loving parent, forgive our wrongs and failings. Accept us in human frailty. We call you Malkenu as sovereign of our souls. Help us rise from our brokenness to build a world of shalom. To this vision, we offer ourselves anew. Please rise, page 77.
Avinu Malkenu, almighty and merciful, answer us with grace, for our deeds are wanting. Save us through acts of justice and love. Page 82. Alleinu le shabayach lo adon hakol, latayit kedula le yotseh breishit, shelo asan kigoye haratzot, velo asamanu kemishmechot adama, shelo asam chelekeinu kaim, vegora leinu kechol hamunam, vanachnu chorim, May the time not be distant, our God, when all shall turn to you in love, when corruption and evil shall give way to integrity and goodness, when lies and bigotry shall no longer enslave the mind nor idolatry blind the eye. So may all created in your image become one in spirit and one in friendship, forever united in your service. Then shall your realm be established on earth and the word of your prophet fulfilled. Adonai will reign forever and ever. Come back up, sorry. <laughs> we moved to Mourner's Kaddish, so you're just going to have to stand back up anyway. But I appreciate you wanting to sit down. As we turn to Mourner's Kaddish, of course, our final prayer in any evening service, we take to heart that this is the first time we will say Mourner's Kaddish together in the new year, 5782. When we say Mourner's Kaddish, whenever that is, each of us calls to our heart and mind all of our own loved ones, those who've touched our lives, who are here no longer, and we remember them, whether it's yard site or not. But on Rosh Hashanah, we remember them all. So too, in this year of 5782, this first time we say Mourner's Kaddish, it seems appropriate that as a community now able to gather together, we call to our hearts and minds, in particular, all of those who have died of COVID-19. There is no way to move forward without grieving. To do so is to lie about our truth. To not grieve is to not remember, is to not learn, is to not grow. And that's the truth any time we say the mourner's Kaddish. It's not an invitation to be paralyzed in our grief. It's an invitation to remember so that we can grow. Let us remember all whom we have lost. Let us carry their memories with us. Let us be better. Let us do better. Let's join together. Yit gadal v'yit kadash shemei raba be'alma divara chirute v'amlich malchute b'chayechon uv'yomechon uv'chaye dechol beit Yisrael b'agala uv'izman kariv imru amen yehe shemei raba mevarach le'olam l'almei almaya yit barach v'yishtabach v'yit pa'ar v'yit romam v'yit nasei Vita dar, vit ale, vit halal, shame de kudsha, brichu. Laela ul ela, me kol bircha tava shirata. Tush becha tava nechamata. Da amiran be alma vi imru, amen. Yehe shlama raba min shemaya vechaim. Alenu ve alko yisrael vi imru, amen. 
O se shalom bimramav, hu ya se shalom, aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael ve'al kol yoshevei tevel, ve'imru, amen. Zichronam livracha, may all of their memories be blessings, amen. You can be seated. As we move toward concluding, just a few words of gratitude, first of all, to our volunteer ushers and greeters. Thank you for taking the time being here, taking time away from your families and wherever you might have otherwise been to help make our community safe and welcoming. We are ever grateful to you as we are in every year. Your faces, even masked, mean so much to all of us to be able to see each other in some way, shape, or form, and thank you. We continue to, uh, to offer our thanks to you in, in forward motion throughout the rest of these holy days. Our thanks to our shofar blowers this evening, to Ben Wilner, and to our Ba'alat Takia Noah Polish. You were wonderful. We are grateful to you. And as we mentioned at the beginning, you know, blowing shofar with a cover, like blowing shofar, first of all, just as is, is, is not easy. Um, but blowing shofar with a muffle, essentially, over it is incredibly, incredibly difficult. The fact that they're able to intone any sound is kind of amazing. Uh, and that their sound was beautiful and that they hit all of the breaks, all of the notes. Uh, we are just ever grateful. So Yasha Koach, thank you again. To Paul Vanderweel, our organist, and to our High Holy Days Choir, we thank you. You fill our space with song, with melody, and you lift our prayers with your voices and your music, and we are thankful. And lastly, to our staff who works tirelessly, our maintenance staff, our administrative staff. These are the people who are behind the scenes so much of the time, but without whom none of this would be possible. Um, it is difficult to imagine how much work goes in, not just to any sort of high holy day in-person service experience, but to the whole production thing we now have to do as well. Um, they have expanded their skills exponentially over these last 19 months, and we are grateful they've hung in there with us and do it all with a smile. So when you see them, please do. You can smile at them with your eyes and tell them thank you. We invite you in this season of teshuva to bring a little tzedakah into your life as well. We have two opportunities for you to do that through the congregation. The first is by bringing non-perishable kosher food as well as toiletries for our annual High Holy Day Ark donation, or to bring new or gently used children's clothing, supplies, or toys for our Cradles to Crayon collection, both of which are in our uh, north parking lot, uh, in the front of the parking lot, two very large storage bins. They'll be there through September 30th. Come by any time to drop off uh, whatever you have to offer. Our services for Rosh Hashanah continue tomorrow morning through the afternoon. Please do check the schedule. Please only come to the services for which you have passes. It's actually important so we can ensure that we don't uh, go above a certain capacity so that everyone feels safe and comfortable. We are really hoping the weather holds out for our 3.30 outdoor shofar blowing service. I know some of you are giving me eyes already. It's not looking good. but. It's Rosh Hashanah, and you've got a bunch of people here who could pray. So if we could sort of direct our energies towards pushing those severe thunderstorm watches to, like, say, five, that'd be great. But either way, because I'm not sure if that's how God or the weather work, check your website, our website, the Facebook page, emails, just to make sure uh, that that service is still happening. If there are severe weather watches, it's not going to happen, just so you know. Uh, either way, though, we will continue through the first day of Rosh Hashanah, the second day of Rosh Hashanah, which, God willing, will be out on our Goodman Terrace. So I uh, do think of joining us there uh, if you have passes. And we look forward to continuing into what, God willing, will be a wonderful, safe, blessed, and healthy new year. Our service, oh, one more thing, sorry, your prayer books, if you could help our ushers by taking them out with you and returning them to those bookshelves where you got them when you come in, that would be great. Our service concludes with Ein Kelo page 95. Would you please rise? Ein 